you so much for coming out tonight. My name is Johanna Matheson Elmer. Thank you. And I'm the director of Artists in Partnership. Some of you know that we've been serving the community for 24 years. And this was just one little idea we had seven years ago. Why don't we have a party for the ladies that support the arts and that make the arts and that make our community the special place that it is. Look around the room. Women. So it is my honor to get this party started and uh, the first thing we would like to do is to introduce you to all of our amazing honorees this evening. So when I call your name, please stand up. And then I want to hear it from the crowd after we've got them all up and let them know that you love them. Lillian Reznicek. Kathy Tamer Campbell. Julie Carrion our duo. Lanceman Slevin. Run the Gale. All right, hold on to your seats. Colette Lee Morales. Andrea Gatto. <laughs> Rachel Ivy Byer. <laughs> Juliana Dernbach. <laughs> Betsy Mills. We're going to open up with our Lifetime Achievement Awards. And I'd like to call up Marianne Bessler. Hey, good evening, everyone. Okay. I'm here to introduce one of my very dearest friends, Lillian Messenger. She was born in Manhattan, and she lives in Long Beach. Many years she's lived here. And I've known her, and we've been friends for over 40 years. So in 40 years, she's always loved art. She's always been passionate about her creations. She constantly impresses me with her talent. She's earned a bachelor degree in fine arts at CW Post in Brookville. And this just confirms that this is what she was meant to do. Lil has used her talents in many ways to help others. When I met her, she was a special ed teacher. Her career as a special ed teacher lasted 28 years. She also shared her talent as an art therapist at a long-term long local nursing home, volunteer art teacher at an assisted living community, and an instructor of private art lessons. Her painting style is both realistic and surreal. I have seen her create portraits of people and pets that have crossed over and give them as gifts to loved ones. I was unfortunate enough to lose my dogs, and I was very sad. And what surprised me was the painting of them that I'll always cherish. 
very special, very different. She works monthly, mostly with oils on canvas and enjoys painting local landscapes as well as images from her travels. Perhaps some of you were lucky enough to see some of the paintings that she did from our vacation in Italy. It was a great vacation. She also has done some stunning florals, mandalas, and seascapes. In addition to exhibiting her impressive paintings in galleries, group shows, and libraries, she has done commissioned landscapes and portrait paintings for clients. This award is well deserved. With that, I give you Lillian Resnichev. Very nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> A very talented singer and Renaissance man has agreed to do the introduction for Miss Kathy Teamer Campbell. Ronnie Miles! Good evening, everybody. It's good to be home. All right, this person who I'm getting ready to present, born in the era of women's liberation and free love, was born to live. Her accolades and achievements have been achieved and celebrated. She's been blessed to have a wonderful family who was here with her. But it spans not just bloodlines, it spans across every boundary of association. Her love for God, life, music, lyrics, poetry, and especially people is what has shaped her existence. She loves to be involved in positive endeavors. Her life has presented good and bad as it's all of you. Um, hence, she rejoices with the chance to express herself. Putting pen to paper or fingertips to square keys has been a therapeutic thrill. Poetry and having a reason to write makes her feel listened to and important and heard. And she's lived long enough to be excited about every new day. She chooses to meet new people with a smile and she's gracious everywhere that she goes. With every day being God-given, she chooses to do her best at being a living and acceptable example of a good life. Ms. Kathy Timber, we present to you the woman with the reminder with the born to live this wonderful lifetime achievement award. guys make me feel so welcome. I thought I was in church. I just say thank you guys. Our next Lifetime Achievement um, honoree is, I believe, 93 years old and not able to be here this evening. Yes, her, uh, she had an illness in the family and so Fortunately, um, Ginny Kelly, you're going to hear a little bit about Ginny Kelly. She founded the Long Beach Theater Guild. Many, many years of theater, directing, and such things as that. But I could go on, but why should I? Because I have Maddie Levy, who's going to tell you all about her. Hello, good evening. Um, Got it. Okay, congratulations to all the honorees this evening. And for the record, I believe Ginny is 90. <laughs> so, um, Ginny Kelly is uh, well known in Long Beach to all who love theater. Uh, she's been performing since the age of six. And since that time, she's had a steady presence both on stage and behind the scenes. Uh, Ginny has been instrumental in the success of Long Beach Theater Guild, which has been a Long Beach institution for over 50 years. So, yeah. Her involvement. 
movement began back in the 1970s, and over the years, she's contributed to over 100 Theater Guild productions. Ginny directed 45 of their shows and performed in 15, including Mame and Guys and Dolls, which were her favorites, uh, favorite roles of Auntie Mame and Miss Adelaide. Um, Ginny uh, is on the Theater Guild's board of directors. Um, she currently serves as their treasurer. She manages the box office. She coordinates Playbill ads, creates costumes, and contributes in countless ways. In addition to her involvement in Theater Guild activities, Ginny has spent many years running Spotlight Children's Theater which operated out of Long Beach Point Lookout and Oceanside, and she directed and produced over 30 shows wow. with Spotlight, yeah. Um, so with Spotlight, hundreds of local children were given their first taste of theater and had numerous opportunities to perform and shine on stage. Ginny also directed 25 student productions at Long Beach Catholic School where she taught science to seventh and eighth graders for 31 years. That really deserves applause. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, some of Jimmy's past Spotlight and Long Beach Catholic School students have gone on to perform professionally, and many others remain involved in theater on a community level. You know, in my eyes, what makes Ginny so special is her ability to spread her passion and joy of theater to so many others. Ginny ensures that anyone who loves to perform or work behind the scenes will have a place and be valued. Ginny has always fostered an inclusive environment in the productions that she's been involved with and makes everyone feel like family including audience members, many of which have family and friends in the shows, or have worked with Jenny on past productions. You know, so Jenny, she grew up in Greenwich Village, New York, and she currently lives in Point Lookout with her husband of 68 years, John Theater Guild and her daughter Nancy, maybe some of you know Nancy uh, Gallinaro. She lives in Long Beach and, and she's the Theater Guild's president now. Uh, so when Ginny's not involved in theatrical pursuits, she enjoys spending time with her husband Don, daughters Nancy and Diane, son-in-laws Bennett and Michael, her four grandchildren and six great-grandchildren. Additionally, Ginny is the author of a series of published children's books she bakes the best brownies in town. Ooh, where are they? <laughs> where are they? So Ginny truly is a woman of the arts and deserves to be honored for her lifetime of achievements. You know, so unfortunately, it, it, I'm sorry that she can't be here this evening, but I know that Ginny is very honored to be celebrated in this way. So I'm very pleased to uh, to accept this award on her behalf. So congratulations. Yeah. I would like to call up another youngster, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Eve Hammer to introduce our next Thank you so much. Um, I love this category, the rising star category, because as Johanna was saying, we're here to honor all women in different categories and um, it's just such an important thing that we keep our community filled with arts and keep pushing our young ones to be creative and to keep doing what they love. Um, so I had the pleasure of working with Juliana Dernbach last year. She's amazing. Um, we worked on a mural project together when I was with the Arts Council and it was amazing. She's a wonderful person and creative. I'm just gonna read a little bit about what she's accomplished so far. 
Juliana Dernbach is a photographer, poet, writer, and musician who lives in Long Beach, New York, and is currently a student at Long Beach High School. She's been taking photography classes for the duration of her high school experience and spends a considerable, considerable amount of time in her school's darkroom. Juliana has been featured in numerous photo contests, among them the Roberta Strent Memorial Reward, in which she won an honorable mention, and the Scholastic Writing and Arts Competition, in which she won a Gold Key Award. She has also been playing the piano since second grade and the bass since 10. She has performed live numerous times and would like to continue to do so. Juliana has written numerous poems and has even had some published in books. Juliana utilizes her photography and musical skills as an artistic expression of emotions and events. She focuses the majority of her attention on capturing the beauty that can be found in every given moment. She truly cannot imagine not having art as a form of self-expression. I can relate to that. Keep being amazing, Juliana Dernbeck. You may or may not know, we have a poet laureate in our midst. Paula Karchi was the po uh, Poet Laureate last year. And next week, there is a Poetry Weekend extravaganza at the Long Beach Public Library on Saturday and Sunday. And she even invited me to do a poem. So I'm so excited. Paula Karchi is going to introduce our next honoree. It was fabulous. Got my so, let's hear it for a round of applause for all of the last people who were just awarded a wonderful congratulations. All right, and another round of applause for the next group. So this next award winner has been an elementary school teacher for the past 30 years. Wow. Round of applause for that. She is an inspiring social and emotional learning workshop leader. I am talking to you all about Eileen Fox. So let me share a little bit about her story because it's a love story, really. Eileen's husband, Alan, passed away in 2021. He was a songwriter, a blogger, an animator. Inspired by Buddhism, he published a collection of drawings that he called Doodles Volume One. And Eileen was inspired to promote his legacy and create an educational movement using doodles to encourage creativity, mindfulness, uh, a mission of living. And that's the love story. Um, she has made this mission to have day-to-day -day gratitude, to spread motivational reminders for living your best life, is what she would say. Through her program, Realize Harmony, with Alan's creative art and music as the platform, she has sent out to schools, conferences, and I've seen her and, and spoken with her at um, event tables, where she has these meaningful conversations with people. And that's so important nowadays about wellness, about caring, about the positive message of positive thinking and choosing happy. So we are happy to honor Eileen with the 2024 Educator and Community AIP Woman in the Arts Recognition Award. I just want to say a couple words. I know. 
Um, but thank you, this is so meaningful. I can only get a couple words out, but in honor of my husband. We love you. <laughs> and with this incredible community that has embraced the work that he has done that I go out and share. And I want to thank all my friends and everybody here that supports me all the time and lifts me up and helps me continue the happy life that, that everybody deserves. So please choose kindness, choose happy, and just love everybody around you. Thank you so much. I don't have to introduce the next person, the next um, person that's going to be doing the introductions, because I'm doing that. <laughs> and it is my pleasure and my privilege to introduce you a little bit to the community organizer for the arts, Andrea Gatto. Andre Andrea was the executive director of the MLK Community Center in Long Beach. That's where I met her and um, was able to do some classes with, with the children there at the MLK Center last year. She has a decade of experience in education and community development, designing and implementing innovative strategies for client and donor relationship building, classroom management, and workforce training. Her work is founded on her unwavering commitment to the health, welfare, and education of Long Beach residents with a focus on the disinvested, structurally disadvantaged families, youth, and residents of the North Park neighborhood. As the executive director of the MLK Center, Andrea managed employees and more than 50 volunteers across 11 different community-based programs. Her programs included enrichment and summer youth programs, food rescues, senior citizen programs, clothing drives, career development programs, drug addiction prevent, prevention, athletic programs, theater, on and on and on. The, the woman is remarkable in her energy, in her ideas, And prior to her role as executive director, she worked at Lido Elementary School. Her work with students with disabilities and behavioral issues covered all subjects, including my, my not-so-favorite math, reading, writing, science, and social skills. She's currently pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Organizational and Industrial Psychology. When you meet Andrea, she'll tell you I'm the mother of four children. If you ever see her in a group of families and children at an event, she will tell you, those are all my children. And it's true. She has that level of commitment and that willingness to work hard and to make sure that things get done. And it is my pleasure to be able to recognize and to introduce you to Andrea Gatto. Thank you everyone for being here, for being so supportive. When I met uh, Johanna, I think it was love at first sight for me, <laughs> for sure. And uh, <clears throat> I met her in a time where I was hyper-focused and uh, implementing all of the STEM programs and all of the tutoring and everything at the MLK Center. And I didn't really realize how important the arts were for the development of the children for how therapeutic it was, even for our seniors. 
and for their cognitive health, health and then I just, it, the light bulb went off and I, with my uh, help of my friend, Kyle Savage, we brought theater and my friend Sheena and Christina Curry, we brought um, the baking and culinary arts. And it, it, it's just amazing how little we know about the arts and what is art. And we, we also have the healing arts wellness uh, month in the in the center next week and yes and last year was amazing and we we need to bring awareness to this please everyone i encourage you to donate to organizations like artisan partnership and uh, they they bring all these programs to the community with little to nothing in their budget um donate um go in and book a, um a session with mindy with my my beautiful friend here, Nicole, um, go to the Arts and Crafts, um, what is it? The Arts and Crafts, uh, the Boardwalk, the um, Arts in the Plaza, Arts in the Plaza. Uh, shop there, um, support the arts. It's just better for all of us. And thank you very much. So I met our next honoree, I believe at a chamber meeting, and she took over the room. Her energy, her level of positivity is just incredible. So it's my pleasure to introduce you, I'll tell you a little bit about our next honoree who happens to have a business down in the west end of town. Rachel Beyer has a long-standing relationship with art. As a child, it was the only thing that made sense to her. She didn't excel in math, kindred spirit, or history, but when it came to art, something just clicked and always felt right. The concept of being able to evoke an emotion or feeling with an idea that was created by you is something she always felt was a really special gift. She recently watched an old home movie of herself as a kid. In the movie, her dad is asking her mom, where's Rachel? She replies with, I think she's in her room doing a craft pro project. Her dad comes into the room to say hello and see what's up to her. And sure enough, there she is with a pair of scissors, construction paper, glitter and glue, creating some type of artwork. She watched this video of herself and was happy to see that not much has really changed. She's still that little girl who enjoys being creative and still very much loves playing with her glitter. Art has always been her therapy, her healer, her friend, her store. The, her store, The Ivy, is a way to pay tribute to her younger self, a girl who created her own world with her own color palette and her own paintbrush. It's a place for people of all walks of life to disconnect from the chaos of the world and reconnect with their spirit, heart, and imagination. She hopes she can continue to share her love of all things art and help others find and tap into their own creative spirit as well. She encourages everyone to find their own magic inside of them and help others find them too. Our friend, Rachel Ivy. Way to make me cry. Uh, all right, here we go. Um, I would like to thank the City of Long Beach Artists in Partnership, as well as Johanna Matheson, who from day one has been like a mentor to me. Um, art and creative expression is the only time in my life I've ever felt authentically passionate about anything. Uh, and looking around the room and seeing so many creative people means I must be doing something right. Uh, my store, The Ivy, is a culmination of many years of hard work, creative collaborations, failure, 
and art and retail therapy. At the Ivy, everyone is a friend. I look around the room and I see some people who have been in my store in the last few years, some people have taken classes, and it means so much to me that my vision has connected with you in some way. I would like to thank as well my parents, do not cry, <laughs> my mom and dad who are here tonight, although it hasn't always been the smoothest ride for us, and it has not. You guys have always supported my dreams, my ambitions, at times, my bills, <laughs> and my individuality. I love you both so much and appreciate you more than I can ever convey. Thank you again for this amazing award and honor. I appreciate every single person in this room, whether we've met, whether we haven't met yet, whether, whether we're going to meet, and, and whether we're gonna meet soon. <laughs> um, I appreciate, this, appreciate all of you, and I appreciate the incredible city of Long Beach. Thank you so much. We're going to start now. With our artists and community. We have four of them. One as fabulous as the other. And for the first one, I would like to call up one of our artist and partnership board members, the director of Arts in the Plaza, an absolute dynamo, and someone who just knows how to make things work, Sammy Metzger. So I'm here to present this award for artists in community to our very own Jules. So, let's talk a little bit about Jules. I actually looked it up. I was curious. What does it mean? What is that word? You know, she spells it J-E-W-E-L-S. So what is a jewel? So a jewel is a very pleasing or valued person or thing. A very fine example. The most valuable or successful part of something. And that is definitely her. Jules is the smile that greets you when you enter the library. The content chick cruising around town on her bike. The friendly neighbor who stops to chat. And the infectious laugh that gets you chuckling too. <laughs> She is actively passionate and creative, and she inspires others to take action with their passions and creativity too. And that's why this Artists and Community Award is so appropriate for her, because she really embodies all of that. So a little bit, a few things that she's done, really fun things. <laughs> um, before moving to Long Beach, Jules attended the Academy of Dramatic Arts. Yeah. She was a member of a popular punk rock group named Blood Clot that played all over New York City and Long Island. Jules performed her original jazz song at the Long Beach Jazz Festival with Benoit's Stormy Wednesday Band. Uh, she has been an active volunteer with the Long Beach International Film Festival for several years. Hmm. Over 10 years ago, Jules joined West End Arts, and along with her son, Brendan, was one of the earliest um, artists at Arts in the Plaza. And her, yeah, her jewelry design business was called the Zen Den, and oh, did she have a Zen Den. She had like rugs and comfy and like comfy seats. You could just go and like chill out in her, in her booth. It was amazing. Um, and Brendan and some of the other artists' kids used to hang around all day while their parents were at work at Arts in the Plaza. And what a joy that always was. They would like 
skateboard around and hang out or like hang out under tables or like walk around. They just was, it was what an amazing and special time. Uh, Jules currently hosts a comedy show once a month at the Long Beach Public Library. It's called Comedy After Dark Open Mic Night and it's every third, th every third Thursday at the Long Beach Library and the next one is April 18th from 7 to 8.30. She just wrapped up a pilot that she acted in called The Connie Show. And she's working with Hardwired Production Company on a short film called Scarred Angels. Yeah. And if you are ready for a laugh and a night out on the town, you can catch Jules doing stand-up at the new Dangerfields in NYC on April 24th. It is my honor and absolute joy to present this Women in the Arts Award for Artists and Community to our very own Jules! Just thanks to Sammy Hoops and Johanna Matheson and just a little something the happiest day of your life could be someone else's worst day. So let's all act accordingly. I love you all, Long Beach forever. Okay, our next presenter, again, is that little known gentleman in, uh, here in Long Beach. And um, he's, he's a very special, special young man. Um, I met him pretty much when he moved here to Long Beach. And we've had opportunities to work together. Um, he's helped me so much with so many different programs and musical programs. And um, he just is a joy to know. He has a studio noir, so um, he has mentored so many people. Um, he has such a joy about music and, and performing, and he's, he gives that to the people that he works with. So who better to uh, announce and to present our next honoree, Benjamin Metzger. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful room. Look around, look around at all these beautiful people here. You know, it's just, come on, round of applause for yourself. Johanna is the best. Thank you, Johanna. All right, I was told to keep it to two minutes. And um, the person that I uh, nominated that's getting the award is Ivy Landsman. Ivy Landsman. I'm borrowing Jules' glasses, by the way. Uh, so Ivy Landsman, born in New York City, Ivy Landsman grew up in the Five Towns in what she calls an idyllic childhood. Her father, Stanley, a creative genius, worked in the garment district, owning three businesses and even inventing the first VHS exercise video. Her grandmother, Molly, performed as a vocalist at the YWHA, and Ivy caught the entertainment bug from her. Ivy's father was her best friend and supported her endlessly with unconditional love. Ivy's mother, Selma, who she adores, just turned 90 years of age and uh, currently lives in Florida. Selma grew up in, in the Lower East Side of New York City and married Stanley at 18 years old. She encouraged Ivy to pursue a career as a nurse, and Ivy did just that, graduating from NYU to work as a methadone maintenance nurse and in the NICU. She eventually left those positions due to frequent strep throats and started a chocolate chip cookie company in New York City with her boyfriend called the Cookie Crumbles. From there, she met a girl that would change her life, Robbie Kay. She was her roommate and a singer-songwriter musician. They started singing her songs together, had a very similar tone, and created gorgeous harmonies, blending so well that no one could tell their voices apart. Ivy then formed her own band, Dead Boyfriend who performed originals at the Bitter End, New Music Cafe, Hard Rock Cafe, and other venues in New York City. Ivy then studied lyric writing with Sheila Davis and performance for singers with Ron Panvini. 
Ivy then became a full-time mom, taking time off from her creative career to raise her beautiful son, Spencer, in California. They moved to our city by the sea, and while attending Long Beach High School, Spencer wanted to take drum lessons. His friend referred them to my studio noir, and we joke about how I'm still Ben the drummer in her phone contacts. <laughs> I taught Ivy and Spencer piano, and she began to introduce her wonderful original songs to me, many of which have beautiful videos that you can watch on her social media pages. She joined our Long Beach Ukulele Orchestra in November 2019, after witnessing the amazing landmark theater performance that featured Led Zeppelin songs and more. She bought a very unique baritone ukulele that is attached to her at all times, and if you've ever seen her walking around town, she doesn't have it right now, I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but... I then invited her to begin teaching for my company as she is multi-talented and can play guitar, bass, keyboard, ukulele, drums, and even violin. Ivy has become a huge asset to our company and a right-hand go-to person for Studio Noir. Her dedication is apparent and her warm, creative spirit and soul shine forth throughout her lessons and all the love she gives back to all of us artists as well. I put together a band utilizing Studio Noir staff and booked a night at JR Asian Fusion on March 10th, 2020. COVID-19 shut down everything and we were left to find ways to play music and mentally survive. It was during the pandemic that Ivy started working with Barry Wilner, another very talented singer-songwriter, and they formed a duo called Subdued Chaos. Yeah. Performing at Arts in the Plaza, the Long Beach Hotel, and the Winter Market to high praise. Recently, Ivy Landsman has co-wrote songs with Hugh Colicott and Jimmy Santis that have been signed with publishers, heavy hitters, music company, and imaginary partners music. She is a feisty, rebellious, and beautiful woman who I'm honored to honor with you all tonight. Please give her a big round of applause. Hello, how are you all tonight? I am, um, it's so much easier to talk to little kids, you know, I, 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 I am just so honored and so happy to be a part of Long Beach community. And I just, I got to know Ben who has become, he's like my brother. I love him, he's given me so much well, he's my like favorite brother. I have two other brothers. They're not here tonight. Obviously, he's the favorite. But um, I just, I'm just very honored, and I want to thank my dad, who I know is in here tonight. He supported me in everything I've done my entire life. Um, I want to thank my mom, who um, encouraged me to be an RN, and that was good for a while. But um, now I'm doing my dream job, and I say, just live your dream, boy. If you, if you ever get to meet someone like Ben, you know, latch on to him, and you know, I'm just, I'm just, thank you so much. That's all. Thank you. Johanna, Johanna, Paul. You, I thank you most of all. Thank you. Yeah. So we'll be playing, I just booked this and I have to say, July 16th at the Jones Beach Band Show. Come on out, Tuesday night. It's gonna be Long Studio Noir, Long Beach Ukulele Orchestra. Um, I just want to say really quick thank you to everyone for being here tonight. The night is electric. There's so much beauty in this house. There's so much art and so much love. And I'm so grateful to be a part of this. Rhonda. When I first met Rhonda, it was the most amazing experience. She came flying into a yoga class. And I was like, she's a Sag. She's a Sagittarius fire sign. It's amazing. And um, our journey began, and as soon as Art of Wellness was brought up, Rhonda said, healing, community, art, I'm in. And I'm gonna bring all of my fire into it. And she went to everyone all over Long Beach and 
got everybody involved. So we, Art of Wellness would not be Art of Wellness without Rhonda. So thank you so much. Um, it's hard to be her friend because if the sun is shining, she is either painting or in the ocean surfing. So it's hard to get her, maybe rainy days. <laughs> But um, she's absolutely incredible, and she is a light of this community, and her art is everywhere, and she makes everything beautiful with everything she touches. Hello, everybody. I'm Vicki Delberg, and I will be reading the Rhonda's bio. She chose to do art by tattooing people and painting, and that is what she's done. Making a living doing art is a gift to Rhonda, to give back, to share, and just to be one. Her ability to create a feeling, a mood, a smile, and a memory adds a little bit of light to everybody's day. And as Johanna was just saying about the planters, if you walk by and you're gloomy and you just see her vision come to life. She's tattooed people all over the world celebrity clientele, TV, magazines, all of it. When she was asked to do the murals in Long Beach, it gave her confidence she said that she didn't have. She was so hard on herself. She was a perfectionist. She didn't think that she had the creativity from within, but letting go of that perfection, worrying about judgment and not worrying about judgment, led her to fun, and allowed the connection to come through through universal blessings. It is a feeling and energy that she shares with her art. And I'm so incredibly grateful, Rhonda, to give you this award on behalf of Artists of Partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica, Jessica Healy, and Art Wellness, and AIP, Johanna. I really appreciate you, and thank you for allowing me to paint the town. have been following um, the Women in the Arts events know, know that uh, a couple of years ago we had decided that the healing arts was a, a very, very important piece of um, the combination of art and music and um, just all of the, of the modules that the people use. Um, it also is a community binder and it reminds us about our humanity and that was the thing for us because humanity and the reminder of that and how we're all connected and how we can do some amazing, amazing things really spoke to us and certainly the women that we have honored, I think we started with Kim and Mindy, yeah, the first year, yes. And they introduced us to their tribe, and I could not be more delighted. <laughs> so for our next presentation, I would like to call up Eve and Kim. Hello again. <laughs> um, I'm here to present for Katherine Yeager. Yes, I nominated her as well as a bunch of other people nominated her as well. Um, I'm going to read a little bit about her background and then Kim will jump in and talk about some personal things. Um, okay, let's see. Here we go. I forgot about my glasses. Um, Catherine Yeager is a licensed and New York board certified acupuncturist. She earned her Master's of Science from Tri-State College of Acupuncture. 
Her clinical practice interweaves traditional Chinese medicine, the Japanese style of Kiko Matsumoto, and acupuncture physical medicine with trigger point therapy. In addition, she's fully certified in facial rejuvenation acupuncture and using oils and hydrosols to hydrate, nourish, and fortify the skin for the ultimate glow. <laughs> she is additionally pursuing certification with the American Board of Oriental Rep Reproductive Medicine. And since the early days of her own journey into acupuncture, Catherine has been insatiably drawn to exploring its counterculture and complementary understanding of health and harmony in the physical body. While struggling with anxiety and insomnia in her mid-20s, her mother suggested trying acupuncture, and after an apprehensive first appointment, she was hooked. Acupuncture opened a door through which she began to understand, in a new way, the intimate connection between the mind, body, and environment. Having been raised to believe that the greatest medicine is that of prevention, it was thrilling to find this resonance interwoven at the very foundation of Chinese medicine. It has long been Catherine's desire to participate in a medical model that accounts for the totality of the person, a medicine that recognizes healing as a function of multiple levels. For her, this dream unfolded in the field of Chinese medicine. Full health, by definition, must be integrative. While we are fortunate to have the increasingly deep and specialized knowledge contributed by modern medicine, in our efforts to go deeper and specialize more, we have forgotten that all our parts function in a larger system. Systems inherently need harmony to work. Fundamentally, health and healing are more about systems than parts, and to experience enduring health, we need to make this our path. Catherine is one of the first, she's the first person to have uh, a salt cave here in Long Beach. She's endured two floods in her space and continues to ba bounce back with force. Her light and wisdom shines through all the works she does and her clients love her. She has cultivated a following with her guidance and support of the healing arts and continues to give back to the community in many ways. I've seen her grow and blossom. I know that sounds corny, but she has evolved in the years that I've known her and I'm just blown away. I love who she is as a person, as a healer, and in her own healing journeys, um, it's just been so beautiful to watch and be a part of uh, that growth. So I'm gonna pass it on to Kim, but. Thank you, Eve. <laughs> there's, there's, Catherine Yeager is a beautiful woman who has worked so hard at creating a healing sanctuary here in Long Beach that was so needed. She's created a space for us all to come to and to evolve. When we say obstacles that come and the obstacles that arise, she has evolved through it and her whole entire business has evolved through it. And it has been beautiful to watch. She is a phoenix rising and she continues to give back to the community in the most beautiful ways. You are art. Your healing is art. And we are so grateful for you. Thank you. Come get your award. Healing Arts Honoree, Kathleen Yay. Thank you. I clarified that I would not have to speak, but I'm going to. So, <clears throat> when I first came to Long Beach seven years ago, I'd never been here before. And I was told, I moved here, I was told that I was moving to one of the best communities I would ever know with the greatest people I'd ever meet. And that has been proved to me again and again through countless hardships and crazy times. I could not imagine living anywhere else and I feel so lucky to have come here. So thank you so much to be part of this community is a gift. We all experience it every day. Um, I'm so honored to be up here. So thank you so much. Our next recipient is Colette Lee Miraculous. Colette 
is the founder of Colette Lee Productions, Unite in Fashion, and co-founder of New York Fit Fest. The New York Fit Fest is dedicated to building companies that ignite inspiration in others. Colette, a certified group fitness instructor through AFAA, is passionately dedicated to leveraging fitness for both healing and philanthropy. Specializing in total body workouts, she leads dynamic sessions at Cora 95 as their lead instructor. Cora 95 is a beloved fitness studio in the heart of Long Beach. Colette also holds certifications in indoor cycling, senior fitness, and ensures a diverse and inclusive approach to her fitness, for someone like me, I love. Renowned for her seamless integration of diverse fitness and modality offerings, she offers clients a well-rounded workout aimed at enhancing mental well-being. With her innate passion for music, she endeavors to inspire individuals to view fitness as a pathway to living their best life. having fun. In addition to possessing over two decades of hairstyling experience, which includes high profile fashion and red carpet events, Colette has also catered to diverse clientele, ranging from celebrities to models. Beyond the studio, Colette's impact extends to large scale event production, where she has orchestrated memorable experiences for prestigious organizations such as the Carol Baldwin Foundation, the Wounded Warrior Project, the HRC Foundation, and the Women's Sports Foundation, to name a few. Colette Lee Morales. So when we decided to start the healing arts and the art of wellness, I got a phone call. And it was somebody I knew about, and it was Colette. And she was like, what is going on? What are you doing? I want to be a part of it. How can I help? How can I support? And she schooled me. <laughs> she sat down and she told me everything that I needed to do. And I was like, oh my goodness. All right, here we go. So Colette is magnetic in everything she does. She can get things done like that. She's a Sagittarius fire sign, another one in the house. Um, and she, she definitely is absolutely amazing. Um, we pulled off the electric light parade in three days. <laughs> Colette was like, I'm in. So when Colette's in, she's all in. <laughs> Her unwavering commitment to community service truly defines her leadership. Through initiatives like toy and coat drives, blanket donations, and fashion shows for charity, her endless support for helping animals, Colette consistently demonstrates her dedication to making a positive impact in her lives and the lives of others. During Hurricane Sandy, Colette and her team led one of the largest relief operations on the island. Particularly close to her heart are animals for whom she fervently serves rescue organizations. At the core of Colette's endeavors lies an unyielding passion for helping others lead healthier, more fulfilling lives. A passion that drives her every action and inspires those around her. And if you've ever taken a class with Colette or you've gone to one of her productions, you absolutely know what this feels like and what this means. Because you get all of it. <laughs> when you think you can't go anymore, she gives you exactly what you need to keep pushing you through it and then brings you right back down for that spiritual healing. So thank you, Colette, for all you've given to community and we are so grateful to you.
Um, these magical unicorns right here told me I didn't need to make a speech, so <laughs> I'm going to speak from my heart because I feel like everything, thank you so much, first of all, thank you guys. I feel like everything that uh, we do in our life, we come from a place of love and we do everything with love, all of it comes right back at us. One million percent, and this is proof right here, so thank you so much for that, thank you. Um, I want to say thank you to Johanna and Artists in Partnership, these beautiful souls right here for everything you stand for, everything you do, and for including me in this, in this amazing community. I'm really, really, truly grateful. My family is here. I love you guys. My fiance and my 495 family, my just as 495 Kelly and our team. It's so much more than just fitness. I promise you guys, this space is magical. It is our sweat sanctuary, and we get the opportunity every single day to take people and change their life and let them lead off into the world and be the change and inspire people and just make the world lighter and brighter and filled with more love. So thank you so much. Thank you. Betsy McLeod. <laughs> Betsy Mills is a resident of Merrick, New York, and carries with her a passion for preserving and protecting our environment while helping to uplift the community and those around her. Her professional background is rooted in versatility and includes grant management fundraising, social media, and email marketing, website and graphic design, event planning, and so much more. Betsy is currently the Assistant Director of the Precision Medicine Initiative at Columbia University in New York, and holds her Master's of Science in Nonprofit Management. She is the Vice Chair of Surfrider Foundation, Central Long Island Chapter. I will just share that Betsy taught me to use carry out, not to use carry out anymore, and to bring in to a restaurant that I want to carry out. So thank you for that, Bets. In 2020, Betsy successfully implemented the first ocean friendly community garden, OFG, in the West End of Long Beach. The OFG is a volunteer run sustainable garden based on the principles of healthy living soil utilizing retained rainwater as its main water source. Along with the use of climate appropriate and native plants, the majority of the harvest from the garden is donated back to our amazing community yeah. through the Long Beach Soup Kitchen. There are now three OFG locations in Long Beach with hopes for expanding the program throughout Nassau County in the years to come. Betsy has always had a drive to empower those around her. To succeed using her diverse skill set, she helps various local nonprofits in their efforts to accomplish their mission through branding, graphic design, social media presence, websites, idea generation, on a pro bono basis. Yeah. She is pretty fabulous. <laughs> Community champion. <laughs> She's such a community champion that she moves out of Long Beach and still comes back and does everything for Long Beach. That's commitment. Um, when Betsy first moved here and I got to know her, I immediately saw all of her skills and how brilliant she was and how brilliant she was at bringing people together and connecting people through social media and all the different avenues. There's so many ideas in Betsy's brain that <laughs> you can only do so many at a time. But she's really amazing at doing ev so many for all of the community and especially for Long Beach and we are so super grateful. And when it came to Art of Wellness, there 
would definitely, well, there would be an art of wellness, but it would only be me and Mindy because <laughs> Betsy was able to take the vision and make it clear and make a schedule and make the flyers and connect it to the web and the media and everything so that everyone can take a part of it. So we all work really hard at putting together a program, but Betsy brings it out to the world and she shows marketing and she shows us how to do that in the most beautiful way. She's also magic. She's a manifester of everything that is good in the world. And we are so grateful to honor you, our community Long Beach champion, Betsy McLeod Moon. much I'm not doing a speech um, I guess my only words to live by just keep growing yeah. <laughs> and to this year's honorees welcome to the club <laughs> 